At the end of the previous part of this video, I asked you to figure out how many microstates the macrostate of two heads in a system of four coins has. And if you've taken a stats course, or if you've taken combinatorics, you'll know some rather sophisticated ways to do this, but there aren't so many microstates here, and so you can just write them all down brute force. And there they all are, and so there are six. If you know a little bit of stats or probability, you'll realize that this is 4 choose 2. But if you didn't know that, don't worry about it. So here is a tabulation of how many microstates each macrostate of this system has. And if you, again, know just a little bit of probability, you will have already realized that the total number of microstates that this system has is 16, or in other words, 2 to the power of 4. And we can now calculate the probability of each of these microstates. This is the probability of getting these outcomes if you flip four coins simultaneously. Now what we're building towards here is thinking about macrostates and microstates of systems with a lot of atoms. So thinking about four coins isn't enough. We need to think about what things like this tend to do when you have more objects. So let's just think about more coins. If you have 10 coins, then I'm not going to write out the full table because 6 is the same as 4 and 7 is the same as 3 and so on. But here are the probabilities, and what I want you to notice is that the probability of zero heads is now quite small. You're very likely, flipping 10 coins, to end up with between about 3 and 7 heads, and somewhat likely to get 2. You'd need to, on average, flip about 1,024 times before you would expect that you would see zero heads, and there's no guarantee that you would, and of course you might get it on your first flip. What about 100 coins? Well, now the probability of zero heads is absolutely minuscule. That is so tiny that you could flip 100 coins every second for your whole life, and it would be extraordinarily unlikely that you would ever get zero heads. You're most likely to get somewhere between about 30 and 60 heads. So these probability distributions get more and more peaked in the middle as the number of coins increases. And that's the main point I want you to carry away from this. When you have a lot of things in your system, there tend to be a small number of microstates that are enormously more likely than all of the other ones. The other key thing that I want you to note is that the reason some outcomes are more likely is that they are macrostates which correspond to larger numbers of microstates. When there are many ways to realize a particular value of a macrostate, that will result in a high probability macrostate. Now let's think about something which to you will feel more physics-y. Let's think about a pendulum in a box with gas, but this gas is only going to have three atoms. The pendulum is interacting with those atoms. It's an isolated system, no energy or matter in or out. And let's say that the total energy of the system is six units, and that these units can only be exchanged in integer quantities. That might not sound very physical to you, but actually on the quantum scale, that would be right. On the quantum scale, energy is only exchanged in discrete units. But we're doing it here to keep things simple. And then the energy is going to be exchanged freely among the objects in the system over time. So perhaps here we have three units in the pendulum and one in each of the gas atoms. But if we blink and look again a moment later, perhaps there will be two units in the pendulum and two in each of two of the gas atoms and one with nothing. And blink again and maybe now this is the situation. And what we will call the macro state is just how much energy the pendulum has. Here are all of our possible macro states. The pendulum can have any energy in integer steps from 0 to 6. And let's now start 
tabulating all the possible microstates, which are going to correspond to how the rest of the energy is split up among the atoms. Well, if the pendulum has six units, in other words, all of the energy, that's easy. There's only one way that's possible, and that's for none of the gas atoms to have any energy. Now, if the pendulum has five units, then there's one unit in one of the gas atoms. But since there are three gas atoms, any of those three could have that unit of energy, and so there are three ways for this to happen. So this gives us, so far, numbers of microstates for the macrostates corresponding to the pendulum having five or six units of energy. Again, let's check that you're following the argument. So I've done part of the work for you here. Let's think about the macro state where the pendulum has four units of energy, and so the gas atoms have two units of energy in total. And there are two ways for that to happen. Either a single gas atom has two units, or uh, two atoms each have one unit. Well, how many microstates does this give us corresponding to this macrostate? <laughs>